Hi. Welcome to Canna Spader Christmas. In this episode, I want to cover using a computer to run your lights. Now, assuming you already have a computer and it's, you know, within the last three years uh, of age, you probably have no issue at all running the latest sequencing software. As it gets older, four, five, six years or more, uh, chances are you're increasing the likelihood of having some sort of issue running the latest software. But this probably isn't something you don't already know. So let's assume your software of choice loads and runs on your computer. You're happily typing and clicking away, creating your sequences. Thanksgiving rolls around, your display is all set up, you fire up the show, everything is just running flawlessly. Uh, about a week into it, you need to do something on your computer other than running your show. So what do you do? There's a couple of options. You could either do nothing because you have another computer that you could do this work on, and that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the other thing is you wait until January to do this task because your show is running. Or you try and do the task in between, you know, when your show's not running so that you don't uh, interfere with the show. Or you just do it at the same time and hope you don't overtax your computer. Another option is to get an inexpensive computer to actually run your show and free up your computer to do other things. What I'm talking about is using an inexpensive computer called a Raspberry Pi. Now, a Raspberry Pi is a single board computer. It's got every, you know, the, this whole thing is a computer. And it doesn't have a monitor and keyboard and all that kind of stuff, but you can attach those things. Uh, a handful of lighting enthusiasts like yourself have gotten together and created a package called Falcon Player. And this is all the necessary files that you load up on here to basically just completely schedule and run your show. Uh, the board itself, you can buy the board uh, standalone for about 35 US dollars. Uh, a complete package runs about 65 US dollars and includes the power supply and maybe a case. I'll put links to both of those below in the description. Using a computer brings up a very important point. How do you hook all this stuff up together? Uh, this term is referred to as computer networking. For new people, this can be the most confusing or challenging part of the whole system. But really, once you've gone through it and you kind of get the hang of it, you'll think, oh, this is nothing. Plus, there are people on the forums to help you out. Once again, Keith did a bang-up job presenting this subject at the 2017 Mini in Sydney, Australia. So if you haven't seen that video or if you're new to networking, uh, go check that out. It's, it's very good and basically has all the information that you need in it. Uh, if you're watching on a computer, a little banner will show up right here with a link to that video. Well, maybe it's over here. I don't know. It'll come in. As your show grows, the amount of network traffic required to run it increases. So with a couple of strings of lights, it's, it's probably not a big deal. But once you start going over several thousand lights, the amount of network traffic required becomes significant. So uh, if you're running your lights on your home network, then you could start seeing problems, network issues with things that you're doing on your computer. Or your lights might start to stutter if you're streaming YouTube videos while your show's running. So best practice is to run your show traffic on a separate network or subnet and separate that from your home network. And this is usually where people get tripped up. Public internet addresses are managed by a central authority and they have set aside three private ranges. Many home routers use a default address of 192.168.0.0 through 192.168.0.255 for their home network. But I've seen the 10 net used. My personal router defaults to 192.168.1. So it really depends on your internet service provider as to what your default network is going to be. Now, the last number in the IP address is generally the host address. 
Uh, zero is used for router, typically used for routers for that network. So uh, you, it's rare to see a computer with the last number zero. And 255 is called the broadcast address. It's for special services. Uh, so you will usually, the last number in your IP address will be from 1 to 254. So if I set up a subnet or part of a network, uh, for my home network on 192.168.1 and show network on something else. So let's 192.168.2 for example. The, the, the home network computers on 192.168.1 know nothing about any computers that I have on 192.168.2 and same thing. So that's how we separate the home traffic from the show traffic. Now, you could use 192.168.5 or 192.168.100. Just something different than your home network, whatever that is. When you set up your Raspberry Pi, I suggest you do it with the Ethernet cable plugged into your home network. It just makes things so much easier to get set up if your computer and the Raspberry Pi are on the same network initially. The very last step of setting this up will be setting up your show network. So let's say you just finished loading up the Pi and you are able to access it using an IP address on your home network. Now sometimes you can just open the browser to http colon slash slash fpp. Uh, this doesn't always work. But let's say it does. You're able to get to the Falcon Player web server on the Pi. So in this state, the Pi is connected to your home network using an Ethernet cable and the Wi-Fi is not configured. The IP address is automatically assigned using DHCP from your internet gateway. Now the first thing you can do is go to uh, the network settings. Now, yours will be set something like this. So that's ETH T80. So this is the, the physical wire that's plugged into the Pi. We go to WLAN. This is where you set up your wireless settings. Now you want this to be on the same network. So mine is, I have already set mine up statically. Uh, in fact, you may want to do this first. Uh, go and set a static, you know, it's normally DHCP, but go change it to static. Set an IP address in the high end of the range of your network. Uh, chances are less likely that DHCP is going to assign an IP address there. Let's see. So mine is set to 192.168.1.199. Um, Netmask is 255.255.255.0. And I don't have a gateway in there. So now we go to WLAN. I would say set a static address. Let's just set that to 192.168.1.200 I think 200 since the other one was 199 and it will fill in all the information when you hit tab. So 255, 255, 255.0 and the gateway is the IP address of your internet router. So it's whatever your gateway is on your computer, the gateway for the WLAN 0 should be the same. Now to hook up to the Wi-Fi, you will have to enter your SSID and the passphrase and hit update interface. And that, update the interface. So we get that. And then you will restart the network. Yes, we'll restart the network. And so you should be able to still see everything because you're still connected to the ethernet cable. Now try to access the Pi using the WLAN address. So whatever you put in here, uh, use that. If you use DHCP, you know, you can use DHCP. If you do that, you'll have to figure out what address that it got from your router. So that's why 
I always recommend using a static address because you know what it's going to be. It's always going to be the same. Um, so if you can connect to that, then you can disconnect the Ethernet cable and then make sure that you're still able to go to different pages on this thing. So that means that you are still connected to it. So if that's connected, your Wi-Fi is connected, now you don't have to worry about the Ethernet side. All right, so assuming that you can get to the Wi-Fi side, you have your Ethernet cable disconnected, go back to network, and now you can change this to some other network. So this was the 192.168.1 network, so let's just make it 192.168.2, or you could put it 5, or you could do it 100 or you could do 200 you know, whatever you want whatever is different from your home network it really doesn't matter set that there update the interface and restart the network and then you've got your show network so now those two networks are separate your show traffic will come out of the ethernet cable on the pi and uh, you won't have to worry about your traffic your show traffic messing with your home network or your home network messing with your show traffic because those are two completely separate networks and um, they will not interact with each other I hope this helps some of you especially if you're having difficulty with the networking aspects of setting up the Raspberry Pi uh, I know it can be a little frustrating but I think once you get it set up you're like oh I get it you know uh, if you have any questions, leave them below or hit up the forums. Uh, you probably get a quicker answer there anyway. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. And all the dogs run. There's so many cars going back.